everyone, Lauren from Bedford Village Flower Shop. Thank you for joining me again. I am so excited to do a bridal bouquet with you today. Um, this is a little bit of a different bridal bouquet. It is a larger scale and it's more of a garden style with a cascade. So it requires a little bit more mechanic work, um, a lot of wiring, wiring of flowers, a chicken wire cage, um, that sort of a thing. So I wanted to walk everyone through how I put this together. It's kind of a fun process. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I've got my chicken wire here, so I'm just gonna take my tin snips and cut my chicken wire. Okay, some of you may be familiar with the pillow. That's basically what I'm creating out of chicken wire. So I basically want to fold over, I have my long piece of chicken wire and I'm folding it in half and I'm going to twist those loose ends together. Handy dandy needle nose pliers, they are great. Basically I am just taking the ends and twisting them together and you really want this to be secure so give it a few twists on each one. Okay, once I have either end twisted together, I'm gonna take the open side of this pillow and all the loose wire that I have, it's gonna get twisted and thread through the open pockets of the chicken wire. This will kind of secure it, will secure it closed so that you indeed have a pillow, which I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so once I have secured everything, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. Tuck in those ends and just give them a squish. And there we have our pillow. Very cool. So before I go any further, the next thing that I need to do so that I have everything prepped and ready to assemble into the bouquet is I have to go ahead and wire some of my flowers. I don't wire all of my flowers. Um, it is a very European method to wire all of your flowers in a bouquet. I do kind of a hybrid, a little bit American, a little bit European, um, and I find that it works really well, especially for what this bouquet's purpose is. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on wiring my flowers. So I'm gonna go ahead and start wiring my roses. I have this beautiful quicksand rose. Just such a great vintage -y, antique -y shade. I'm going to start by removing um, all of the calyx petals. Um, they're just going to get in the way when we when it comes to taping. I'm going to give it a snip. I would say you know about an inch, inch and a half is totally fine. And then I'm going to take a thick gauge wire, something nice and sturdy. I'm going to cut the very tip of it so that it's sharp. So that's a like that would hurt you kind of a point. Um, the smoother you can pierce the flower, the easier it's, the, the better it is for it. Um, you don't want like a jagged edge going into a flower. It's just going to create air pockets and openings for bacteria and debris to get in. So just a nice clean pierce. I followed the stem up and I went vertically into the calyx of the, the flower. I'm then going to take a thinner gauge, slightly thinner gauge wire, do the same thing, make it a weapon. Again, follow that stem up and insert it into the calyx. With that thinner gauge wire, I'm then going to take it and wrap it around the stem. And then I'm gonna continue down and wrap it around the thicker gauge wire. Then adhesive tape, start on the middle of the stem, work your way up, cover those piercings and then start to work your way back down and come all the way down to the end of the wire. Okay. 
after you're wired, you will have this wonderful wired stem. The beauty of this is that you can point this any direction that you want to. If you need to cascade it, you can point it and cascade it. And that's why we are wiring a lot of our stems today. So I've already gone ahead and wired um, the roses that I'm using for this particular bouquet. The next thing I need to wire is my ranunculus, this beautiful salmon ranunculus. And again, I'm gonna take off those calyx petals. Um, I really do this mostly because you don't see it in a bouquet. Um, and also it, they're in the way when you tape. So again, just give it a cut. You're gonna take that thicker gauge wire. And on this one, it's not necessary to cut the wire so that it's sharp. You really just want that blunt end. And because ranunculus stems are hollow, you're gonna take the wire and insert it right into that hollow ranunculus stem just until you feel a little bit of tension. Then you can take thinner wire, like the gauge of a um, spool wire, and you're gonna pierce the stem across, fold it like a hairpin, and then wrap that just like we wrapped around the rose, you're gonna wrap around the stem of the ranunculus all the way down onto the wire. And then with your tape, start in the middle, work your way up and work your way back down. Okay, the next thing I'm going to wire is our eryngium, otherwise known as thistle. It's not a true thistle though, it is eryngium. Um, and I want to wire this because I want it to be part of what's cascading. So I'm gonna cut my stem and I'm gonna use a hairpin wire. So I'm gonna take that thicker gauge wire, bend it like a hairpin. If I wanna tighten it up so that it's a tighter loop at the top, just use those needle no nose pliers and give it a nice tight, little loop. Then I'm going to basically slide it right over where those flowers meet. And again, just twist it around that stem, twist it all the way around the wire. And I'm going to double it up by coming in with that thinner gauge, make my hairpin. On the other side where those flowers meet, come down, twist, and tape. Woo! Try not to hit yourself in the face with the thistle. Um, this is a really good example of how I'm going to hybridize this a little bit. I have stems of, of eryngium that are pre-wired, that are wired, but I am also keeping some stems that I'm not going to wire. These are going to be in the upper portion of the bouquet, and these will be more of the cascade. So from here, I am wired. I've prepped my greenery so that I have no greens on the bottom. Um, I've got my cage. I've got my other flowers that can be out of water with me. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. So now it's time to start assembling the bouquet. We've done all of our prep work. We have our mise en place. My brother would be proud of me for saying he's a chef. Um, everything is all laid out. And so we're gonna go ahead and get started. You saw my greens earlier that I removed the lower branches from. I have other ones that I have like kind of the midsection of greenery still on them. And the reason is when I insert them into the, the pillow that I've created, I want the tension there. I want it to basically catch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So there I go, and I'm able to lace those lower branches into the pillow. And 
Okay, so one of the other things that I really like about using a pillow is that it's it's holding it there. It's got the shape, I can hold it with two fingers. It's easy, it makes your assembling a bouquet very easy. The other complimentary, complimenting greenery that I have here is this beautiful silver dollar U, um, which is really gonna give some nice texture um, to the bouquet. Um, like I said, we wanna have that cascade feel, so we're gonna bring some in down below. Um, it's a good idea to keep a mirror by you so you can always check where you are with the bouquet. All right, so I can see when I'm looking in the mirror that I'm missing some here and I'm missing some here, so I'm gonna wanna fill that in. We've got our green base. We've got the greens basically created the structure of you know this very wild, gardeny kind of a, a bouquet. So from here, we're gonna plug in our flowers. One thing that was really important to this bride is that she had a flower of distinction, and that's why we chose the Eryngium. So her bouquet is the only thing, except for the boutonniere, right? The boutonniere, the groom's boutonniere, and the bride's bouquet um, are the only things in the wedding that have Eryngium, which is really a special piece. So I'm going to go ahead and start plugging these in. So we're going to go ahead and take these wired pieces and this is where we're really going to get that cascade. We're going to insert the wired pieces and then because we've done our due diligence, we can put them anywhere we want to. The next thing I'm going to bring in is a non-wired element. I'm going to bring the stock in. The stock is one of our unwrapped elements. Um, stock just really doesn't do well out of water, um, so it's not good to take a chance on wiring something like a stock. So um, we keep this um, at a length where it can be in water until the actual handoff on the day of the wedding. And now for roses. So we're gonna start plugging our roses in. They're wired so they go in really easily, which is so great. Um, I, I said it before, but it bears repeating. The beauty of wiring is that you can get your flower to face whatever direction you want it to face. It really puts you in control of the bouquet. My roses are in, so next thing I'm gonna move on to is my beautiful salmon ranunculus. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in another ranunculus. This is our butterfly ranunculus. This is another stem that we have not wired. This is gonna be a natural stem. It does not do well outside of water, so we're gonna make sure that it has a water source. This is getting very, very tight, so it's gonna be hard to insert. So I'm being very careful about the way I'm weaving it through the chicken wire, um, and I'm making sure that it's coming out so that it does indeed go into that water source. And the thinner a stem you can get, the better off you are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my clematis. This is gonna offer, it's really gonna accentuate the amount of movement that we have 
in this bouquet. Mattis is in. We have one more element to add to this bouquet, and that is this gorgeous Saracenia. Got a little funky asymmetrical look to it, which I really like. Um, I now want to go through and make sure all of my mechanics are covered, that there's nothing sharp. Um, and I see I've got some chicken wire that's showing, so I want to take some Ruscus and fill that in. Um, and the easy way to do this is not actually to insert it through the chicken wire. I'm going to go on the outside, and that way it's going to give it a nice cover. Just like that. I see some more right here, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in on the outside. And just like that. My, my mechanics are covered. I'm feeling really good about the shape. I feel like I've got a good amount of cascade, good green to flower ratio, and I'm gonna go ahead and tape it up. Patty, throw me the electrical tape. Thank you very much, my dear. We love electrical tape. It has give, and the adhesion is really good. It's great in water. Um, and it's very easy to wrap a ribbon around um, and create the adhesive. It's a big bouquet, so it's really important that this has a nice, tight wrap so that it's easy for the bride to handle. Okay, from here I'm going to take tin snips. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to snip the bouquet and then I'm going to come in with a pair of pruners and I'm going to clean up the ends on the flowers that are actually going to be inserted into water. That way they drink properly. Okay. And there we have a garden style Cascade Bridal Bouquet. Thanks so much for watching. Follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on Insta. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on TikTok. I'm sure there's going to be 10 other social media platforms by the time we're done with this video. Thank you guys so much.